Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today is November 7th, 2018, the day after Election Day here in the United States of America. I want to thank everybody who's tuning in, whether you're watching live on YouTube, here in the live chat, or archived. Uh, today we got a pretty good live stream for you. We are going to talk about a couple news by the numbers stories. Um, depends how, how long I feel like streaming, I guess, tonight. We're going to talk about the elections, particularly the governor races that went on yesterday and how all of these elections are crafted by the numbers. There's a numeric riddle between the state and the governor in all of these elections. So we're going to explore the uh, similarities between some of the numerologies in the elections. I only got so far. I uh, you know, had to work today, so only got a few of these governors decoded, but we're definitely going <clears> to <throat> take a look at some of it. And uh, we're also going to talk about... Uh, well, we're going to touch on, we're not going to talk too much about it, but another channel that claims to be a truther channel that I'm very, very suspicious of, this is a channel that had Zach Hubbard on as a guest earlier this week, a channel that's garnered close to 50,000 subscribers at this point, with lackluster content nonetheless, and we're going to talk about a little bit what I think might be going on, uh, the type of rhetoric that they're spewing, and why I think it might be part of the bigger agenda. And uh, again, I don't want to get too sidetracked with it because right now, you know, I'm just calling it like I can see it. I don't know anything about these guys, but uh, it is something worth talking about because, you know, it's an interesting place out here. Every time someone tries to take this movement forward, someone jumps in and, you know, tries to make it look like they're taking the reins and then misguides it. And I think this is exactly what we're seeing here. But before I get into that and keep ranting on all those things, let's talk a little bit about the elections. And uh, some of the things I picked up on while glancing at the numerology of some of these governors. So the first thing I want to point out, and something that stuck out to me particularly because I live in Wisconsin, uh, our gubernatorial race was resolved yesterday when Tony Evers challenged Scott Walker for the governor's seat in the state of Wisconsin. And I saw that he was elected today, and... You know, I kind of feel bad about it, but I know I shouldn't. I haven't been following the election coverage. I didn't know who the people running for governor were, except for Scott Walker, of course, the Republican. But I saw his name, Tony Evers, and I just thought, man, that's a pretty small name. How much you want to bet it sums up 44? And, of course, naturally, just like the state of Wisconsin, which, using our standard reduction method, you'll see these ciphers scrolled on the right side of your screen throughout the course of the video, or at least part of the video. The four base ciphers are lumped on your screen here. You'll see the alphabetic order numbered 1 through 26, the most easy to understand basic cipher that exists, each letter numbered relative to its position in the alphabet. This also applies to the reverse alphabetic order. Both methods can then be reduced to a single digit using the rules of numerology. This is also called Pythagorean gematria, where each double digit number becomes a single digit. But what's especially interesting about the slide you're looking at is that Wisconsin and Georgia are the only two states that sum to 44 in the reduction method. And let me just prove this to you. It just so happens I have a spreadsheet because when I found Gematria, I actually doubted what we were seeing. Hmm. All right, well, I don't have it listed only to states, I guess. So we're going to filter it to countries and states. There's only two countries with 44 gematria, Argentina and Mauritania. And there's only two states in the Union with 44 gematria in reduction. That's Wisconsin and Georgia. Both Wisconsin and Georgia had new governors elected just yesterday... And not only does Tony Evers sum to 44 using the reduction method, just like the state of Wisconsin where he's governor, but look at the name Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, who will be taking office in January. Brian Kemp in reduction, also summing to 44. And in his case, even his first name, Brian equals 44 in the standard reduction method. So if there's one thing that stands out about rigged elections from yesterday, it's this. 
the only two states in the union to have 44 gematria, and it just so happens to be people with names that sum to 44 in that same cipher. Um, it's almost ridiculous, you know. A couple years ago, I joked, all these sports games are going to simply sum to the date numerology in every single game, and no one's even going to notice. And it almost seems like they're trending that way with the governors. Just stick a guy in the office who's got the same gematria. We'll talk about a few more of these as well. But before I talk about the other states, I want to touch on uh, a little bit more, just a little bit more in-depth on the numerology of Tony Evers, because this is really solid stuff, and it should be understood by everyone who lives in Wisconsin, and particularly everybody who voted and consented to this sick form of government that we're actually living under. So we saw how Tony Evers and Wisconsin share 44 gematria. Well, the state of Wisconsin was established on May 29th, 1848. And as I commonly talk about, the dates on which states were admitted to the Union is like a stamp that seems to follow them, you know, throughout their existence. So if a state is in, a, in the news for a particular story, there's usually a riddle in line with the date numerology. Well, anyways, this was date numerology of 100 if you add 5 plus 29, plus 18, plus 48. Using the reverse alphabetic order, where Z gets assigned 1, Y is 2, all the way through A is 26, the name Tony Evers equals 100, just like the state's establishment numerology. Another significant cipher is the English extended method on the left side of your screen. This is structured more closely to ancient Hebrew and Greek isopsophy charts. Those alphabets doubled as a numeric and a linguistic system, and they were numbered as such, 1 through 9, 10 through 90, 100 through 900. Of course, English extended ending in 800 because it's only a 26-letter alphabet as opposed to the full-form Greek or full-form Hebrew and Greek alphabets. So this method of gematria also significant and observed by the occult that's essentially crafting these rituals by the numbers. So in this method, Tony Evers equals 1610. And if you measure to Wisconsin's anniversary on May 29th, it was 161 days ago. Now in this same method, notice how Wisconsin sums to 881. In something so called Satanic Gematria, this method built around the number 666, Satanic Gematria equals 666 in this method, the name Anthony Stephen Evers equals 881, just like the state of Wisconsin in extended form. Wisconsin was also established on a date with 55 numerology. 5 plus 29 plus 1 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8, called the life lesson number. The date this man was elected had full numerology of 55. And don't forget, Wisconsin equals 55 in the reverse reduction method. Should also point out that not only did yesterday have this 55 numerology, which points at perhaps Wisconsin getting this numeric ritual to begin with, but it was also the date that left 55 days on the calendar. And this language of letters and numbers goes hand in hand with dates on the calendar. The Gregorian calendar, which was crafted by the Jesuits, also known as the Society of Jesus, which seems to be interlinked with Freemasonry and is responsible for these numeric rituals that we're seeing played out on the news and in our elections here in America every single day. So there's a little bit more to this guy's name. Tony Evers, you know, we saw the 100. In Ordinal, it's 143, and the biggest city in Wisconsin is Milwaukee, which also has this 143 and 100 gematria. But as I commonly say, this is a Masonic conspiracy being played out by the numbers. In the reverse alphabetic order, Freemason equals 147. This 147 very significant no, uh, number. It's this numerical knowledge, both words are summing to 147, that is used to code the conspiracy, conspiracy 147. 
So how interesting is it that not only does Scott Walker have this 147 Gematria using the alphabetic order, but his opponent and the man that he ultimately conceded the seat of governor to was Tony Evers, 1470 in Jewish Gematria. And if you didn't get a good glimpse of Jewish Gematria earlier, this was the cipher on the right side of your screen. Structured similarly to English, however, this is based on the ancient Latin alphabetic order and seems to be every single bit as significant as the alphabetic order and reduction methods in my research. And again, if you think you're looking at too many numbers here on the screen, do understand the two on the left are definitely the primary ciphers, ordinal and reduction. The reverse methods are more tertiary, and then the Jewish method on the right also has some great mystical significance. <clears throat> and these are the same methods I use in every video, explaining the same types of rituals being played out all the time. But how about this for a riddle with the two governor candidates of Wisconsin? First, you have the Democrat, Tony Evers, who was born on November 5th, 1951. <clears throat> that means he celebrated his birthday one day before the election, and he turned 67 years. Born in 51, turned 67. And then you have Scott Walker, whose birthday was only three days earlier. He, was, he turned 51 and was born in 67. And these two numbers stick out, particularly for Freemasonry. Notice how with the S exception, this method, the same as full reduction, the only difference is S, because the number 19 is only being reduced once. 1 plus 9 is 10. The word Freemason equals 51, and if you write out Freemasonry, it sums to 67 in the same method. Also happens to be the same gematria as the word governor in both reduction ciphers, single and full. And, uh, you know, in my last video, I pointed out the, uh, you know, the, people say it's rude to make fun of somebody's looks. There are some people who just look and emit darkness to me. And this guy's face, this new governor, does not look like a good dude to me. Uh, this looks more like a Catholic priest with ill intentions uh, than a man who should be in a trusted seat of government. Not that any freaking seat of government should be trusted, but you guys know my stance on that by now. <clears throat> All right, so thanks again for everyone who jump, jumps on, uh, <laughs> who's jumped on so far this evening, 41 people. Uh, just a reminder... You know, Zach's got the Gematria effect on TFR Live for anyone who wants to call in. Uh, I wasn't really planning on, on jumping in on the show or anything tonight, but I uh, just wanted to, you know, throw that out there in case anyone wants to share their their knowledge that they're found. Um, you know, I do have to do dishes eventually, so, you know, we will have to end the video at some point. And yeah, like like people in the comments are saying, I mean, they're not trolls, they're not spamming, they're you know, they're saying like it's because we want this video to be circulated in YouTube as much as possible. Uh, the type of information I'm sharing has been censored over and over and over again by YouTube. Uh, they haven't censored us lately, but then again, we've been a little softer on some of our speech, I suppose. <clears throat> All right, so let's take another look at some more of these governors, right? And uh Get a feel for what we're looking at because once again pretty much all of these guys put in here by numeric ritual and my favorite ritual of all is the first gay governor in Colorado can't wait to get to that one first let's start with Alaska because Alaska is the first state in alphabetic order that got a new governor and just like I pointed out earlier with what's his face Scott Walker and Tony Evers So I got to adjust my screen for you guys, working OBS Live. So we had Scott Walker in Wisconsin, 147. And he was up against Tony Evers, who sums to 1470 in Jewish. And it's interesting, this happened multiple times between the ordinal and Jewish ciphers, once again proving the significance of both in some of these other elections. And... First, we had Bill Walker in Alaska give way to Mike Dunleavy. Bill Walker's full name is William Martin Walker. 
interesting that it's another walker who has the same sync between Ordinal and Jewish as his opponent. But yeah, in Ordinal, 224, the outgoing governor. And in comes Mike J. Dunleavy. That's how his full name is listed on Wikipedia. And in Jewish Gematria, he's got the 2024. So the same thing we're looking at over here, right? How, how weird is this? And I just realized that their names were Walker. All right, let me try not to do that again. Well, actually, it was in my post, but you guys get the drift. Uh, there's clearly something going on. Two outgoing governors named Walker on the same day, and both of them have the same gematria in Ordinal as their opponents did in Jewish. I mean, it, there's no way that's a coincidence. It's crazy. All right. The state of Alaska, talking about Mike Dunleavy once again, Alaska became a state on January 3rd. And including the end date, January 3rd was exactly 44 weeks before the election. And in two of our alternate reduction methods, septenary and Chaldean, Mike J. Dunleavy equals 44, both methods. Next, we're going to talk about the, Cal uh, the governor of California. So finally, octogenarian Jerry Brown is out of office. He was both the 34th and 38th governor of California, or was it the 39th? Either way, he's making way for a man named Gavin Newsom, who was just elected governor in California yesterday. And the first thing that stands out about the name Gavin Newsom is that in reduction gematria, Gavin Newsom equals 52. This is the same as California in the same method. Full reduction being our, you know, primary, probably most significant cipher. Um, you know, I still like to think ordinal is probably just as significant. Reduction gives you smaller numbers, so there's more sinks. Either way, it's important. Now in Gematria, not only does California equal 52, but it has a Jewish value of 219. And isn't it interesting that this guy, who was elected governor at age 51, oh boy, sorry guys, my PowerPoint skills are lacking compared to where they were about a year ago. The, the word governor sums to 51. This man was elected governor at age 51. He'll be turning 52 in the year 2019. And again, California equals 52 and 219. If you measure unto his 52nd birthday, you get 11 months and 4 days. And in Francis Bacon Gematria with capital letters taken into account, California equals 11-4, 114. My final observation about this man's age, if you take this 219 Gematria of California and flip it upside down, you get the number 612. And... On election day, this guy was 612 months old. Also, he has that 1010 birthday, revelation equals 1010. Interesting, considering that we've been talking about a possible uh, false flag event or something interesting occurring in California this year, uh, maybe even on the date 811. All right, so now we're going to talk about Colorado, which has my favorite numeric riddle of all of the new governors. So first of all, here's a look at John Hickenlooper. He's the guy who's leaving office in Colorado. Using the alphabetic order, Colorado equals 83. So does the word election. And on election day... The governor of Colorado was exactly 800 months and 30 days old. Likewise, he was also 8 months and 30 days after his birthday. But what's more interesting is how many days he had been in office. This man assumed office as governor of Colorado on January 11, 2011. 
Measuring from that date to election day was 408 weeks, exactly. In Jewish gematria, the word gay equals 408. It also equals 48 in the reverse alphabetic order. And what do you know? He's given way to the first ever gay governor to be taking office. And isn't it hilarious? Isn't it just freaking hilarious that in gematria, first gay governor equals 219 alphabetic order? And the first gay governor will be taking office in the year 2019? Just another coincidence. I'm sure. Now, if you just write out gay governor, <laughs> in Jewish gematria, you get, oh, <laughs> you get 1420, right? <laughs> I, can't, I can't even hold my laughter on this one. <laughs> Gay governor equals 1420 in Jewish gematria and 142 in Jewish ordinal. <laughs> this gay governor was elected, which sums to 142, when Colorado was 142 years old. <laughs> oh. I don't know why I'm laughing so hard at this, everybody. I'm really sorry. <laughs> GG indeed. Holy crap. I broke character. <sighs> I mean, this, it's just hilarious. All right. And then you type out the word homosexual. You get 43 in reduction. <laughs> this guy got elected at age 43. He's the new governor of Colorado, which sums to 43 with their homosexual governor. <laughs> and what do you know? He's going to be the 43rd governor of Colorado. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, we're not even done. There's, there's more here. The word gay. Oh, I keep misclicking. Okay. The, the word gay equals 33 using the alphabetic order. <laughs> Come on. The 33rd prime number is 137. See this? 137. Well, I guess you can't see it. You'll have to take my word for it. One, 137, the 33rd prime. And the word homosexual sums to 137 in the reverse alphabetic order. And it's interesting. You know, there's this riddle with 33 and 226. And this is because when you write out 33, it sums to 156 and 141. Both of those numbers in the alphabetic order equal 226. This guy's full name, Jared Schutz Polis, equals 226. Schutz? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's one of those names. Uh, the name Jared equals 38, by the way. That's the reduction value of Colorado, the state that he was just elected governor in. And uh, there must be something to this, right? Because when you write out Jared Polis, in all the normal big numbers, number ciphers, you get ones, nines, and sixes, and that's it. Maybe there's something to do with like homosexuality and... 9 1 and 1 6. I don't know. Uh, this is just an observation I'm making and throwing out there. But uh, even his birthplace, Boulder, Colorado, summing to 619 and 160. And the name Schutz. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, Schutz equals 901 also. So. I mean, what is going. What is in the water in Colorado? But. Uh, this whole 142 gay governor thing, this this just cracks me up on, on so many levels. Uh, next, let's talk about the governor of Connecticut. Connecticut equals 46 in reduction. And here we got another guy with a pretty short name, Ned Lamont. In reverse reduction, Ned Lamont equals four, uh, 46. In English extended, Ned Lamont equals... 440. 
he was elected exactly 44 weeks after his birthday. Also notice that he was born on January 3rd. Happens to be the same uh, day that Alaska was established, which is totally unconnected and I shouldn't have mentioned. But the state CT, when abbreviated, sums to 13 in reverse reduction and a 103 in Jewish gematria. And not only does he have that 1 slash 3 birth date, but election day was 10 months and 3 days after that day. Connecticut admitted to the union on a date with full numerology of a 109. This man is becoming the governor of Connecticut, which sums to 109. And he's doing it on 1 slash 9 slash 19, like 1919. And for those of you who follow my work, maybe you recognize the number 1919. It's the gematria of what I think is one of the most significant numbers in gematria and numerology in general, which is 1,331. And Connecticut, in the reverse order, equals 13 and 31. So, just an observation. Uh, there was this other governor. I, th this is where I ran out of time before the stream. I did notice that the new governor of Florida, which sums to 170 in Jewish gematria, his name is Ron, which sums to 170 in Jewish gematria. Of course, Freemasonry founded in 1717. When you multiply 17 by 17, you get 289, and his full name has that 289. So I'm sure there's a lot more to this. I didn't even look at the senators. I probably plan on, well, I do plan on taking a little more time and breaking down more of the, uh, the gubernatorial and senatorial elections because, look, people need to understand, again, what type of government they've consented to by entering the polling booths and casting their ballot, jotting their name down. All right, guys, so uh, let, let's do a little more news by the numbers. Uh, we're going to look at one death, and then I'm going to talk about uh, some YouTube stuff, which for some reason I feel obligated to since I have a channel and have a voice. All right, so former NFL player Vince Manuai who was an offensive guard originally drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars, said to have died this past week at the age of 38. And once again, the number 38 should stand out to you. The word death equals 38, alphabetic order. So do the words murder and killing in reduction. The movie Murder by Numbers turned the E and the B into a 3 and an 8 in the poster. This is because this is the number of death. The song Murder by Numbers was released in the year 83. So right off the bat, the 38 pops. In another form of gematria called septenary, uh, can't think the name of who talks about this the most, but whatever. Uh, the name Vince Manuai sums to 38, just like the age at which he died. November 4th, when he passed away, was the 308th day of the year. So we mentioned how Murder by Numbers released in 83, the word murder equaling 83 in the reverse order. This man's name was Vincent Manuai, which sums to 83 in reverse reduction. He was a football player. Football equals 83 in the alphabetic order. 83 is a prime number. That would be the 23rd prime number. I may not have touched on prime numbers yet, but do understand that prime numbers are extremely significant to this study. In fact, there's a prime number cipher based on the alphabetic order uh, that also has some significance to gematria, um, something we're not going to look too much at in this video. So 83, the murder number, football, Vincent Manuai, all 83, the 23rd prime number. 
23 is another number associated with death and murder and killing. Well, in septenary gematria, death equals 23. That 19 is interesting. I'll have to log that in the thought bank. But the word murder equals 529, which is 23 squared. And the headline that was given to us by Bleacher Report, all of these news organizations coding their headlines with gematria, former NFL OG Vince Manawai dies at age 38. This sums to 529 with number calculation off. So the, he did not die on November 5th. This is a mistake on my blog. He died on November 4th. But the date that this made news was November 5th, 11-5. The date that he died, November 4th, was 115 days after his birthday. You may recall the word killing has what we call double gematria of 115, whether you're using the reverse alphabetic order or the Jewish method. With capital letters, Vince Manawai sums to 187. 187 is the homicide code, as taken from the state of California and many others. Notice how his full birth numerology was 118. 7 plus 12 plus 19 plus 80. Both of the words death and homicide have a gematria value in Jewish of 118. And to top it off, he wore number 67. This man was referred to in the headline as OG Vince Manawai. Again, OG being offensive guard, the position he played in football. OG Vince Manawai summing to 67, just like the number he wore on the field. 67 is a number you got to look out for. Blood sacrifice, 67. Human sacrifice, also 67 in reduction. 67 is also a prime number, by the way, the 19th prime number. Remember the word death in Chaldean. We just saw how that sums to 19. Speaking of Chaldean gematria, might as well pop that open again. The name Vince Manawai sums to 44. And the name Manawai in reverse reduction also sums to 44. This is the ordinal value of the word kill. Now, a lot of these deaths are in ritual to solar eclipses. In fact, I would argue most of these celebrity sacrifices are. And this all comes from the Bible. Remember, there was crucifixion darkness, something that was talked about in three of the four Gospels. This describes how darkness fell over the sky when Jesus was crucified. And a lot of people interpret this to be a solar eclipse, but... Whether or not it truly was, symbolically, solar eclipses are used to measure up deaths in these rituals. And this man died 440 days after the Great American Eclipse. And I think there's good evidence that this man was an eclipse sacrifice right here in Gematria. In the reverse order, eclipse sacrifice equals 290. The name Christ equals 290 in Jewish gematria. Remember, it was Jesus' crucifixion, which sums to 79 and 101. That was an eclipse sacrifice, 79 and 101. But again, the 290 is what's important here, because this man's full name was Vincent Keone Manuai, which sums to 290 in the reverse alphabetic order, confirming that this was... Well, maybe not confirming, to me, solidifying my theory that this is an eclipse sacrifice. Furthermore, look at the phrase crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This equals 303 in the alphabetic order and 123 in reduction. This man was drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars, which sums to 303 and 123 in the reverse order. And if you think I'm pulling this phrase out of my ass, crucifixion of Jesus Christ, 303, consider that Jesus died at age 33. And even Jewish ordinal sums to 303 this phrase. 
Remember rapper XXX Tentus Yon, who died earlier this year? These are all, all these rappers who are dying are relations are are related to the Jesus ritual. Rapper equals seventy four in the alphabetic order, just like the name Jesus seventy four. Remember Tupac was seventy four. His other stage name Machiavelli seventy four. First he was killed, and then Biggie Smalls was killed. Biggie Smalls equals 74. Well, then we had the death of XXX Tentacion, another rapper, which sums to 74. He died on June 18th, 2018. And if you measure to the next total solar eclipse that passes over the United States of America, it was exactly 303 weeks later. In Jewish gematria, crucifixion of Jesus Christ equals 2,040. The next major rapper to die this year was Mac Miller. Mac Miller died on September 7th, which was 2,040 days before that same exact eclipse. And like I said, these ordinal and Jewish ciphers are used in accordance with one another clearly. Eclipse also equals 33, like the age that Jesus was crucified at under an eclipse. This man played college football in Hawaii, where he was born. Hawaii equals 33. We talked about the number 74 with Jesus. The 74th prime number is 373. And look what Bleacher Report gave us for their headline. This headline equals 373 in the alphabetic order further confirming that this is another 74 Jesus sacrifice ritual. His name has matching gematria with the city he was born in, just something that stuck out to me. He was the 72nd pick in the draft back in the year 2003. His name, Vince Manawai, equals 72. And then he died a span of 251 days before his next birthday. Ritual sacrifice, summing to 251 in the reverse order. A couple more things, you know, a couple more interesting numbers to point out here, but what more do I need to point out when it comes to, you know, numbers of death and killing? And then on top of that, the Eclipse Crucifixion Code, clearly in play, both between the numerology of his death and name and what the media is telling us about this. You know, this is never a mistake, this, these headlines. And, and people think about how awkward so many headlines are phrased. And, you know, when I went to journalism class in high school, and I remember them telling us how editors used to take such a long time to make their headlines because they had to worry about how much space it left on the newspaper. They wanted everything to be filled. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sure that's the only reason that they're taking time to come up with headlines, right? Okay, so now I'm going to pop in the chat, and, uh, well, I might as well show my face on the screen here. Something I just thought of, why not put my face on the screen and put the chat on the screen? Look at this. <laughs> it's, it's magic. Isn't that cool, Truth Seekers? All right. So, uh... What I wanted to real quick touch on, uh, if you go to Gematria Effect News on YouTube, Zach has uploaded the video where he went, went on a, a YouTube station called No More News. And No More News is not something I've heard of until recently when Zach mentioned it. And as far as I know, this is relatively new. And perhaps someone in the chat or... Maybe I can figure out when this channel popped up and how long they've been at it. Um, because it's a pretty curious case. You know, they had Zach on the show. And rather than being grateful that someone with, you know, knowledge such as Zach, knowledge that's clearly entirely important to exposing the very Zionist scheme that they claim to be after, he seemed entirely disinterested. It seemed like he didn't give a shit. 
he was very dismissive of a lot of the stuff. No matter what he showed him, he failed to show any, you know, excitement, any surprise, anything. He just deadpan the entire time. And to top it off, then he liked all the comments that were bashing Zach and calling him crazy and off his rocker. So Zach saw that, then made a response video, and this guy calls him and starts calling him a bitch and what's wrong with you, bro, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this shit is crazy. For someone who claims to be targeting the, the, the conspiracy and going after the Zionist, you know, the Zionist agenda, to completely shut down the very code that they are obviously using to operate by is a sign of one of two things. Either a fool or someone who's shilling. And, you know, this guy's got... 47,000, 50,000 subscribers. That's about as high as they let Zach's channel go before they deleted it. Um, granted, they're flagging his videos. I don't know if they're giving him strikes. You know, our channels were all deleted before. I, I kept losing the ability to live stream over and over. And really, I just stopped doing videos on false flags the day after or the day of. And it's kept me alive on YouTube since. They just don't want our videos going viral. Um... I, I do agree. I think he's, you know, he could just be dumb, but, like, <laughs> my, my problem is this. You know, clearly Zach has knowledge to share, and he's not the only one sharing it. There are many, you know. Uh, one of the guys that Zach's talked to, his name was, uh, I don't know if that was Handsome Truth or some other guy, but he was talking about how he watches Chigozi's channel. So there's a lot of people doing this knowledge. It's not like... This is something that should easy, easily be dismissed. But not only was he dismissing it, he fucking flat out called Zach insane. And it's just, it's nutty f for me to understand how anybody who has the same ideas and goals, supposedly, could say that about it. I mean, it's just, it's nothing jives, nothing makes sense. To top this off, another woman called in to Zach, and she was a, uh, a former veteran. Well, she is a veteran, of course. And uh, she said she got the same treatment on Adam's show. So, look, I'm going to throw the shill alert out there. And another thing I want to point out, I talked to Zach after his appearance on Skype yesterday. And what he mentioned is that all the graphics that they made, you know, that was with the intent of drawing in conservative viewers. So I just want to point out that not only are there multiple people in on this operation, but they are definitely using psychological tactics to manipulate people. You know, for me, all my videos are pretty simple. It's just, you know, you're just looking at a picture of pie in the background. You're looking at me. You're looking at my calculator. That's it. But, you know, anytime there's a high production quality, and granted, it's not that high. I probably could do this if I spent a little more time on it. But I don't know. I just, you know, th this is a joke. Like, if this is the guy who thinks he's going to be leading this anti-Zionist Goyim defense movement, which is something I don't really like to be called anyway, but whatever. You know, he's got to have more of a fucking backbone than than this. Uh, to have a guest on, to treat him so poorly, to dismiss the knowledge he's sharing and call him crazy, either this guy isn't cut out for the job or he should be completely ignored altogether. Um, and, you know, this other guy who was trying to back him up, right, he was saying, oh, you know, Adam's got a lot of stuff to do. He can't always focus on the interview when he's doing it because he's got to run the OBS. He's got to keep his eye on the chat. He's got to pay attention to the listener. Look, if, if you're interviewing somebody and you don't have the ability to keep up with them, then you shouldn't be doing the interview in the first place because then you're just generating a shit quality product that people shouldn't be spending their time on. You know, every time I've had people on, I do keep an eye on the chat occasionally, but, you know, your focus has to be the person that you're interviewing. It's important knowledge to be shared. And if they can't keep their fucking priorities in straight and make a good video presenting what absolutely needs to be shared with the audience that they have, then they're making a massive, massive mistake. So, you know, I just wanted to point this out because, uh, w you know, we, we need to know where we're being led, right? If someone comes along and claims to be leading in some fashion, and not only do you have this guy, you know, racking up subscribers, but, you know, apparently he, ga he garnered about $2,000 in one live stream just by bitching about all his videos being flagged. You know, my videos got deleted, and I, of course I, I complained about it, but I didn't whine about it for 47 minutes and ask for donations and super chats. You know, um, 
shit, if I was making $2,000 a stream, I mean, you'd be getting a hell of a lot more Gematria done out of this. In fact, I wouldn't be even be working, so it doesn't make any sense. Um, and, and another big, big red flag that stood out for me, well, actually, I'm going to throw two red flags out there, is that this guy was on InfoWars, and we know InfoWars is doing the same thing. They're they're coded out by the numbers, just like mainstream media. You know, InfoWars giving us that 666. Here, uh, let me pull my super calculator in here so you can see all the crazy numbers I use. Um, InfoWars. 666 in reverse English Sumerian. Alex Jones, 1111, the wake up number. Alex Jones also has that 42 Gematria, just like InfoWars, 42 in reduction. And, uh, you know, all their people are coded. Uh, I've put out tweets before talking about, like, who is it? Leanne. Lee Ann equals 666. She's one of the anchors on InfoWars. Her last name is McAdoo, which sums to 666 in the same cipher that InfoWars does. It's very clear what they're doing. <clears throat> and now you have this No More News station, and you have this guy. He's real buddy-buddy with Marty Leeds. Remember, Marty Leeds, someone who attacked my website on one of his videos, then when I suggested he might be connected to the whole operation that cut my website statistics in half. Then he proceeded to threaten me with legal action. That was my only interaction with him on Skype. So, funny, you know, I leave a comment on this guy's video and now he tells me to send him a Skype message and talk to him like a man. Yeah, because real men send other real men legal threats, right, Marty? Anyways, he's still got Marty's video up talking about Gematria on his channel. And what cracks me up is that he's holding a Rubik's Cube here. If you watched the video with Zach and Adam Green... I don't know. Like Adam just started asking him stupid questions out of nowhere. He just goes, "Oh, are you like one of those human calculators? How quickly can you solve a Rubik's cube? You know, because Rubik's cubes really has everything to do with your intelligence. It just has a lot to do with what you're studying." Anyway, you know, if this is a Zionist operation, before I talk about the numbers, one more thing I want to mention. One thing that stood out to me about these guys, these this. Goyim Defense League, right? <clears throat> and I get that they want people to be aware of the word Goyim, but they don't have to put it in their title. <clears throat> like, because this suggests that this is something you would want to join, right? A defense league. And by calling it Goyim, that's a derogatory term. You know, you might as well have a, a Black Lives Matter movement called Niggas with Attitude. Well, wait a minute. But, you know, Goyim Defense League, you know, why call it this? And when Zach was talking to these guys... You know, he was, he was talking about the Zionist agenda, right? Jewish supremacy. And this guy's like, oh, we're not talking about Zionists. We're talking about Jews. And it's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This isn't a Jewish conspiracy. There's Jews are part of it. There are some Jews there, but there are people of all religions in it. You know, this whole thing about anti-Semitism, which is picking up again lately, this is, there's an agenda out there to get people to dislike Jews. They just want division to begin with. But they also want a reason to censor people. And now you have these guys who are kind of suspicious to begin with. They're dismissing real knowledge that is important and undeniable. And they're coded by the numbers. And instead of using the Zionist term, they're, call, they're just calling out the Jews. And that's what's going to get us in trouble. You know, if we just start blasting Jews then we're going to get the whole anti-Semitism thing. And it, plus, it's just simply not true. I mean, most Jews aren't benefiting from this conspiracy. Um, I guess that's debatable, but whatever. You guys get my point by now. Should probably switch back to the basic calculator. No more news channel in reduction gematria equals... 88 and of course this is how it appears their icon on the screen at, at all times in this same method goyim defense league equals 88 and this is interesting it stands out because the word jewish equals 88 in the reverse order think about how our president trump you know on the jewish sh shekel in israel now trump equals 88 
Something else that stands out about the Gematria of Goyim Defense League, in reverse, this is 308. And the number 38 is central to the study of Kabbalah and Gematria, which we're working to expose, which these guys aren't. The word Jew equals 38 in ordinal, and Jewish equals 38 in single reduction. So you have that connection to 38 with Goyim Defense League. Furthermore, you type out no more news, and you get a 58 and a 59 in the reduction methods. And could be coincidental, you know, there are a lot of things that sum to both 58 and 59, but Freemasonry is one of them. As far as the 58 in reduction, GDL, the abbreviation for Goyim Defense League summing to 58, Zach mentioned that this guy was recently in Jerusalem, which equals 58, and the first person he met was 58 years old. Of course, masonry, the highest degree, is said to be the 33rd. Masonry equals 33 in reduction. What's also on the screen the whole time is No More News with Adam Green. And again, you have this logo, Fox, you know, No More News channel, Goyim Defense League, and then No More News with Adam Green. See how this sums to 303? Isn't that interesting? This also works in Jewish ordinal. And then they gave him the name Green. or you know, And, and I say that he, they gave him the name because the other guy who was talking to Zach on the phone, he admitted that these were not their real names. They said they were using stage names or character names. Uh, well, guys, like my real name is Derek Takori, right? Zach, his real name is Zach Hubbard. Like, these are our real names. Why are these freaking people always coming out with stage names? What's wrong with putting your real damn name out there, guys? You know, I mean, it's cool they put their face out there, but why don't they want anyone to know who they really are? What's going on? Why are these guys coming up, popping up out of nowhere with stage names? Tell us your real fucking names, guys. Quit bullshitting. Learn this code. If, if you can't understand it, well, you can. It's not that complicated. But take the time and learn it because this is what's going to wake people up. At least I hope. I just think there's a, there's a chunk of people who will wake up when you, when you show them numerology. Um, really, it's just another big piece of the puzzle, but it is a big one. And it was the one that really let me turn the corner, right? And on top of that, there's some kind of uh, spiritual significance behind Gematria as well. Like, there's a reason they run things by this code. And it's because that's the matrix that we live in. Uh, it does the same thing. Let's see if we got any more uh, interesting news stories to touch on. Here's one where a Russian jet intercepted a U.S. Navy plane. This happened on a date with full numerology of 54. See how fighter jet equals 54 in both reduction and reverse reduction methods? This incident occurred over the Black Sea. Black Sea equals 54 in ordinal and reverse reduction. The U.S. Navy plane was intercepted. Intercepted sums to 56. This happened 56 days before the end of the year. Also notice how Black Sea in reduction syncs up with the date numerology 18 and 27. And speaking of the 27... Notice how the jet that intercepted the plane was an Su-27 aircraft. In Jewish Gematria, Su-27, with the numbers calculated in full, sums to 317, which is the word lie flipped upside down. This is something that's even coded into the language. The word lie flipped upside down is 317.
In septenary gematria, the word intercept sums to 41. And in Jewish reduction, it sums to 42. In fact, in Jewish gematria, we also get this 402. This interception occurred four months and one day after Independence Day here in the U.S., or a span of four months and two days. Think about how USA equals 41. It was a Russian jet. The president of Russia is Vladimir Putin, and he was four weeks and one day, or a span of four weeks and two days after his birthday. Remember, 41 and 42, the gematria of intercept. In single reduction, Russia equals 42. In standard redu reduction, U.S. Navy plane equals 42. So not only do you have to measure to these presidents' birthdays on the dates of these significant news stories from international waters, you also want to look at the national holiday of that nation. And Russia celebrates its national holiday on June 12th, which was 147 days before this incident. And U.S. Navy plane equals 147 in reverse gematria. But there's also a link with Donald Trump here. Because if you don't include the end date, it's 146 days. Donald Trump's birthday is, is 14 slash 6. Here we are 146 days after Russia's National Day. Remember, Trump is connected to Russia in Gematria. Trump equals 470. Russia equals 470. The first meeting to take place between Trump and Putin was exactly 47 weeks after the total eclipse that went over the United States. Total eclipse equals 47. These are all rituals in relation to time. Time equals 47. But again, this aircraft was intercepted 20 weeks and 4 days after Trump's birthday. 24 stands out because Russia equals 24. In reverse reduction, Russia equals 48. And this date was exactly 48 weeks be uh, before Putin's birthday. And then to top it off, they gave us a nice little pie tribute. Consider that this date was 31 weeks and 4 days before Trump's 73rd birthday. Notice how the 73rd day of the year is 314. Again, like 314, the first three digits in pi. So right off the bat, you see how Trump has pi numbers in his numerology. But check this out. This Russian fighter jet sums to 209 and 250. It's said that this circled the plane for a span of 25 minutes, which also sums to 209 and 250. The word pi equals 29 and 25. In Hebrew gematria, the word circle sums to 143, and Russian fighter jet, therein Jewish gematria, summing to 1430. And just to confirm that this was all a numeric ritual in relation to Trump and Putin, notice how the headline that they gave us on CNN sums to 488. It's all about this 88 here in the alphabetic order. We saw how Trump equals 88. Vladimir also 88 in the alphabetic order, and he's the Russian president. Russian summing to 88. couple more riddles in the headline. Uh, the headline gave us 209 gematria. This was 29 days after Putin's birthday. Russian equals 29. Masonic equals 29. Masonic also summing to 223, and that was the reverse reduction gematria of the same headline that had been decoding this entire time. All right, guys, before I scan more through the chat, which is really hopping today, you guys are nuts. You know, it's funny. This it My viewers have capped out at 51. And uh, 
I see my chat was just catching up. You guys aren't typing that fast at all. Thanks to everybody who's watching live, as always. Uh, the last story that I want to look at, you know, this is another one that uh, that kind of irked me because no matter how much I share this numerology stuff with people I know and love, they're still being brainwashed and fooled, and it just breaks my heart. <clears throat> you know, what's so ridiculous about it, it's like people see that the, the numbers, you know, they transcend coincidence and there's something more going on, but so few people understand the implications of that, which is that these numbers are not all happening naturally, especially in stories like this. It's very clear what they're doing. Like, these two women, like, they were not bitching on Twitter because they had to wait for two hours at a restaurant because they were Jewish. Just look at them. Do you think these two women are suddenly going to get all up in arms and get in the national news media because of anti-Semitism? It doesn't make any sense. But uh, it's made to look Trump supporters look bad. It's made to look white people look bad. There's just a war on everybody right now. And the first thing that stuck out to me is the name of the restaurant that they claim to be discriminated from. See the, uh, the car mines right there above this woman's head in the photo? See how car mines equals 134 in the reverse order? Well, in reverse reduction, make America great again, which is literally directly underneath the sign, also sums to 134. This incident occurred on November 5th, which was a date with full numerology of 54. Notice how in both reduction methods, Jewish women equals 54. Just like how we had those, or that, that fighter jet over the Black Sea, everything 54 on that date. Also interesting that these Trump supporters, which sums to 75, we're visiting Carmine's restaurant, which equals 75 also. But here's what really tripped me out about this. If you look at the gematria of female Trump supporters, both using single reduction and reverse reduction, you get the value of 117, right? It's said that these people were made, uh, <laughs> per the headline, right? <clears throat> they accused him of being anti-Semitic for a two-hour wait. Two-hour wait in the alphabetic order sums to 117. And then to confirm that this wasn't a coincidence, look at the statement that Carmine's released on Twitter. If you run the gematria on this statement, it sums to 1,017 in reduction. Their Twitter handle was Carmines NYC. Look at how this sums to 124 and 173. That's the same as two hour wait, 124 and 173. And as far as the 173 in ordinal, this is the reverse value of anti Semitism, which sums to 173 and, like I said, in reverse. So I often talk about how. Uh, you know, how important the moon is, the metonic cycle. The Jewish calendar uses a lunar-solar format, so it combines lunar phases with solar years. And it's said that Jews identify through the moon, which, you know, becomes invisible and then comes back, just like how so many Jewish cultures have been wiped out and then returned. In Gematria, the word Jews equals 57, just like moon. Of course, this story about Jewish women, it's not like I'm calling out the Jews for some specific reason. It's just because that's what the story is about. <laughs> but uh, the moon has this 19-year metonic cycle. And of course, moon sums to 57, which is 19 times 3. And what do you know? The headline sums to 1,009. I'm sorry, this isn't the headline. This is the quote that the woman put on Twitter. In reduction, her quote sums to 325, which is the ordinal value of Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, 325.
So, you know, I threw that out there and it's like, really, is all this stuff coincidence? And I think maybe uh, my buddy came to his senses a little bit. But then I had to talk to somebody else who was celebrating the fact that we have a new governor. And I'm just like, look at this guy to begin with. First of all, he looks evil. Dude looks like he hasn't brushed his teeth in years. And uh, just doesn't look like someone I would trust. And then to top it off, he's got all the numbers that line up with Wisconsin, the date that Wisconsin was established, the city of Milwaukee. It's just ridiculous. Um, hey, uh, I don't know if whoever asked for this feature is in the chat, but I did want to point out, uh, let's just go full screen. I updated the website today. Oops. So if you go to miscellaneous, there's a new link here that says download calculator. And if you click that link, it'll download a zip file. And that zip file has only the files necessary to run the calculator on your browser. So all you need to do, and I'll just show you. I'll, I might as well just do this on the screen, right? You click download calculator and you get a download alert. And it'll give you a zip file. And most of you should have unzipping software, if not. You're going to have to Google and unzip software. Um, WinRAR comes with a lot of these uh, operating systems now. So in here, you'll see a folder, and you'll see the local Gematronator folder, and you'll see two subfolders, the Gematria calculator and the date durations. The Gematria calculator, all you got to do, open it up and go to index.html. And either double-click it to open it up in your default browser or drag it into a window. And, uh, well, you might have to unzip it first. Yeah, you got to drag this into a folder. This is why I don't make tutorial videos because I'm a klutz when it comes to this stuff. Here. You go to Downloads, which is Control-J in Chrome and Firefox, I think. But if you right-click, you can extract the files. And it'll ask you where you select the folder. In this case, I just extracted these files to my downloads folder. And now I should be able to go in here, open up the index, drag it into the browser, and I'm operating the calculator offline. So... If you go to my website, which you inevitably will, and it will be down because for some reason my website can't handle my exorbitant traffic, I guess. Um, yeah, just just open that up, download that file, and you have offline gematronating to your heart's content. So you're welcome for that. <laughs> Algonquin for the good land. Truth seeker. Milwaukee, yes. Someone watched Wayne's World a long time ago, hey? All right, everybody. Um, sorry I didn't get more to the chat. I just wanted to get that rant out about No More News and uh, my questions about that. And if someone from No More News happens to see this, which I doubt, but hey, apparently they do follow some numerology channels. So, uh, you know, if he follows Chigozi, I'd like to think he follows me too, but whatever. Um, yeah, reach out to me and tell me what the hell is going on. I want to know why you guys aren't using your real names. I want to know why uh, your, you, you have all that gematria that lines up with Freemasonry numbers like 33 and 58 and 88. Um, I want to know if that's a coincidence. I want to know your guys' take on it. Uh, and I, hey, if you really are honest about wanting to expose Zionism, you really need to incorporate just a little bit of numerology in there. Um. You don't even need to be an expert at it, but just pay attention because if you're not, then you're missing a whole bunch. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for popping in. I'm going to drop this out and uh, maybe I'll drop a beat on my way out as well. What do you say? Any requests? I figure, you know, I always already start these videos out with copyrighted music. If they really want to take my videos down, they'll find a reason to do it. 
you know, they took, they deleted my channel without copyrighted music. So, you know, for those of you who are worried about it, whatever, guys. Uh, ooh, I went to go see Lane 8 in Milwaukee this weekend. Play this tune. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, uh, in another hour, 45 minutes, Zach will be live on TFR. <clears throat> TFRlive.com, Truth Frequency Radio. Check out the Gematria Effect if you want to call in and share anything. And uh, that'll do it. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Keep seeking and speaking that truth. <laughs>